Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe. In my previous three episodes, we have talked about how to save and load the data by player props, binary formatter, and JSON. In this episode, we are taking a look at how to save and load the data by another method, XML. Here are the steps I needed to follow. First, we will have a look at the concept of the XML and what the difference is between XML and HTML. Second, we will use new class XML document and its statics methods to save and load the coins, diamonds, player positions in our game. Finally, we can use these elements to save and load more advanced data such as all of the enemy's positions and their studies. As always, the link for the project repository is under the description below. You can download the starting project or completed project from my Google Drive. Also, I have uploaded all of the assets and screenshots on my GitHub. Okay, let's get started. First thing first, what is XML? XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. XML was designed to store and transport data. Many computer systems contain data in compatible formats. Exchanging data between incompatible systems is a time-consuming task for web developers. Large amounts of data must be converted, and incompatible data is often lost. XML stores data in text format. With XML, data can be available to all kinds of reading machines, such as people, computers, voice machines, news feeds, etc. So we can say XML is a markup language, much like HTML. Well, the differences between XML and HTML is that HTML was designed to display data with focus on how data looks. XML was designed to carry data with focus on what data is. XML tags are not predefined like HTML tags are. These tags are invented by the author of the XML document. In this episode, we use XML document class, which represents an XML document. You can use this class to load, edit, add, and position XML in a document. This class has one method called createElement. The parameter type is string type. This method creates an element with the specified name. In our project, we want to save our coins number in gameplay. We can simply use XML document dot create elements coins number. Inside your XML data field, you will find something looks like this. Another important method is append child in XML element class. The parameter should be XML node type. This XML node class is inherent from XML element class. We can append a new child node as the last child of the node. All right, after understanding these concepts, let's get into our project. So just open up Unity and currently we already have something on here. This is our player game object and five enemies in the game. Under UI Canvas, we use UI images and UI tags to display how many coins and diamonds we have. Let's open up our game menu script. We can press the plus button to basically clean up my code a bit. Once we press the save or load button, we will call one of functions. In our previous episode, we save and load data by JSON. Here is one function called create save game object. Focus on here, the return type is save type instead of void. We will have one instance of save class and save each data into this object. We will save our game's coins number, diamonds number, player positions, enemy positions, and their statics. Finally, return this save object. The following functions are our previous methods to save and load data in Unity. Alright, let's create two functions called save by XML and load by XML. Let's remove or command our previous functions inside save button and load button function. Create a save class instance with all the data for current sessions saved into it. Let's create a new XML document type instance. If you want to use the XML document class, you have to use systems.xml namespace, which provides standard based support for processing XML. Then we can edit each XML element in our XML document. After that, we can save this document on our computer. 
Once this data field exists on our computer, we can put debug.log to check it out. Create one XML element type variable called root. We use document.createElement methods which create an element with the specified name. We name it save. Later, in the data field, you will find all of the data information will be inside this save tag. Then set the value of the specified attribute. This step is optional and will not affect the final result. Just easy for read in the future. Let's create one XML element called coin number element. The tag name we call coin number. We will save our detail coins value inside the coins number tag. XML element dot inner text can get or set the contagnant values of the node and all its children. This method will return one string type. So we have to convert our game coins number integer type into string type by using two string methods. Then we want our coins information can be saved inside the save tag. In other words, we want to append our coins number element to our root XML element. So we can say XML element dot append child can append a new child as the last child of the node. Likewise, we can use the same steps to create our diamond number element, player X and player Y XML element. All of XML elements append as the last child of our root XML element. Finally, don't forget to append the root XML element to our XML document. We need to use the XML document to save our game data. Save the script and switch back. After we play the game and press the save button, we can go to our assets folder and to find the data field. You will notice that all of the information has been saved inside the same tag. We know that this save tag is our root XML element. Each tag's name has one unique corresponding specified name when we created XML element. After completing same functions, let's deal with load function. Inside the load XML functions, first we have to check whether the data field is, exists or not. If it does, we can load the game. Otherwise, it logs to the console that there is no field in this game. Initialize one save instance. Create a new XML document object. We need to load the specified XML data from our computer. So after loading the XML document, how to assign the values to our game manager variables. We also can use the tag name to find our values inside this field. We declare one node list called coin number. We use XML document dot get elements by tag name to search for a list of all elements that match our tag name. Since we only have one value inside each XML element tag, we can simply use coin number square brackets zero close brackets to represent the first and the only element of the list. We use int.parse methods to convert one string type into integer type. 
Finally, we can assign these integer variables to our save dot coins number. You can directly say game manager dot instance dot coins is equal to coin number count as well. Likewise, we can use the same steps to get our diamonds number player positions by using get elements by tag name. Finally, assign all of the loading values to our game variables. If you go back into Unity and run our scene, we can play our game in several seconds, and we receive 20 coins and diamonds in this game. Remember our current player positions, press the save button and continue the game. After a couple of seconds, once we press the load button, we still can return to our previous positions with the correct coins and diamonds number. Cool. After that, we can save and load more advanced variables such as our enemies' positions and their statics. In this episode, we use the same methods to operate. We declare several XML elements such as bat, bat position X, bat position Y, and bat is dead. There are five enemies in our game. Inside the for loop, each bat information such as their X positions, Y positions, and the statics will be saved inside the bat tag. And each bat tag XML elements will be appended to the root XML elements as well. Save the script and switch back. After playing the game, we can go to SS folder to check out our XML elements. As you can see, each enemy has their unique own group. Each group contains their positions and statics. Inside the load functions, we also use get elements by tag name to get the node list in XML document. Inside for loop, we use the same step to get access of saving data. Since our enemy position has declared as list, we use list.add methods to add a new element into this list. Once we have loaded the data from XML document, we can assign this data to our game variables. Since we have done this before, we can copy and paste this part from the JSON functions to here. If we enter the play mode, this time we can save and load more situations in our game. Alright, this is the end of this video. In this playlist, you can review each method of saving and loading data in Unity. In the next video, we will compare these four methods with each other and talk about their advantages and disadvantages. Hopefully, you can enjoy today's episodes of this series. If you enjoyed these videos and found helpful, be sure to hit the like button and share with friends and subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for future updates from my channel. There is much more to come. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.